So a yeah, very simple answer would be there's a vast amount of data within reg reporting and being able to kind of get to the point of have chatbots to be able to respond and linking the data mm. uh, and using AI tools just to be able to be more efficient in, in that process, be it from the regulated, like requesting to the regulator or, you know, for our clients coming into our platform. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to At the Forefront FinTech Conversations. I'm Sam Belden, VP and Head of Content at Forefront, and I'll be your host for today. And joining me is Linda Middleditch, uh, Chief Product Officer at Regnology. Uh, Regnology is a leading technology firm on a mission to bring safety and stability to the financial markets. Linda, welcome to At the Forefront. Thank you very much for having me. Of course. Uh, so the theme for today's discussion is going to be the future of regulatory reporting. We're going to talk about how regulators are changing their approach to regulatory reporting, uh, some of the specific regulations uh, that are driving this shift, and how digital transformation and the cloud can help both regulators and the regulated um, as they adapt to these uh, changing needs. And stay tuned until the end uh, for Linda's perspective on how artificial intelligence uh, will play into the future of regulatory reporting. So looking forward to that, but um, without further ado, let, let's sort of start at the top of the conversation. Um, I know that one of Regnology's major focuses has been supporting regulators' demand for more granular data-driven reporting. So tell us about this shift to granularity and, and what it's going to uh, require from regulators and the regulated. Yeah, so look, this is a, a shift that's been happening and is sort of gaining momentum. Um, and it makes total sense, right? Because you know, if you look at the traditional way of doing reporting, it was you know banks producing a lot of data into templates to deliver to the regulator, it's sort of retrospective by design, because you're delivering the numbers that are being asked for. Uh, the idea of moving to granular is that then you know it still it means still that you'll have those some of those aggregates there. Uh, but it also means that the regulators can then look for uh, for items in the data, the granular data, uh, rather than asking for sort of a, a bunch of aggregates overall. Uh, yeah, and you, you look at the programs of work that is there, there's IREF in Europe, um, but there's also you know, the Bank of England has a granular data program, Office 3 has a granular data program, Swiss regulator. So it's across the board, the regulators are now moving to this. So they can be more proactive in their in uh, keeping the market safe. Great, thanks for that overview. And uh, I, I know you mentioned uh, a couple of the uh, specific regulations programs at play in your response there. But uh, what, when you think about sort of the specific uh, regulations that uh, are most relevant with this pivot to uh, more granular data driven reporting, uh, what are those regulations that come to mind, and and what specific challenges are are some of these uh, posing for financial institutions? I think it's, I mean, more than a regulation, it's a mode of delivering the data for any regulation, right? So, you know, IREF is, is, starts with statistical data, but, you know, is expected to extend from that. But it's more a methodology of sending data, as I was sort of saying before. Um, the challenges that come up with that is, you know, it's a real total shift in what's happening today. You know, really, if you look at templates, they kind of digitize paper. Um, and what this now is going towards, you need different tooling it's got different workflow, um, you know, a vast amount of data. So the amount of data that you're delivering is is a lot a lot larger, uh, and that brings knock on effects of of needing cloud and then and other tooling in and around that. But I think workflow is the one that's the most interesting paradigm shift for this space because there has been a tendency to sort of be more manual um, and touch and check and look in Excel and check and check and check. And really, you can't do that when you're dealing, going to more of a data. And this isn't new stuff. It's been done elsewhere. It's been done in some regulatory spaces for some time. Um, but it, it is fairly new when you look at the it, within the core reg reporting um, or in its infancy, shall we say, rather than brand new. Hmm. Yeah. Got it. 
That makes sense. Um, and so I know that Regnology has a great vision for how digital transformation, the cloud, um, other innovations can help uh, both sides of the equation, regulators and the regulated, uh, as they work to satisfy all of these increasingly complex requirements. Uh, tell us a bit more about that vision and, and the work that you guys are doing to make it a reality. Yeah, so look, we've invested heavily into our platforms and we've invested it because we can sort of see what's coming down the line. You know, with our unique position on, on both sides, we have sort of quite a, go, uh, a good global overview and we have an overview from both the regulators and the regulated of the direction of travel. Um, and I think you know, what you can see is the amount of data um, and and the sort of lumpiness of that data as well, because remember reporting is quarterly or or annual or, you know, so really lends itself towards a scalable cloud platform. And granular data just makes it a prerequisite that it's a scalable cloud platform. Um, also, I think there's two other things that come to play there. One is, you know, I think every bank has an AI um, program right now. As soon as you're looking at AI, again, you're looking at cloud. Uh, and then also, um, I think it's the ESG capabilities, you know, ESG credentials as well, like running on-prem, you know, is really not good for the environment, especially when you're talking about lumpy delivery of data. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it really is important that you're moving to a cloud. So we've been somewhat um, proactive, I would say, in our cloud strategy. Uh, we're doing it deliberately because we can see that that's going to be the prerequisite. We want our clients to have the time to be able to be ready for that. Uh, but also because um, you have know, the green credentials and and um, and just yeah, everything coming around the corner needs cloud. So we're setting our clients up for, for the future. Great, and I know that Regnology is working with thousands of financial institutions, uh, many regulators around the world to, to, to make that evolution a reality. So best of luck as you continue that uh, exciting work. Um, we have time for one more question and, and you touched on AI in your previous response, but but I wanna focus on that a little bit more. We, we all know it's a major topic, perhaps the major topic uh, in technology today and including FinTech and RegTech. So wh what is your perspective on, on sort of the, the future, the potential of AI and regulatory reporting and uh, how are you guys uh, using AI today? Yeah, so look, I think there is um, what I would sort of say sort of the, the basic use of AI and and that's to you know look at things and be more efficient in the way you, uh, you respond um, uh, respond to items. So yeah, a very simple answer would be there's a vast amount of data within reg reporting and being able to kind of get to the point of have chatbots to be able to respond and linking the data mm. uh, and using AI tools just to be able to be more efficient in, in that process, be it from the regulated, like requesting to the regulator or, you know, for our clients coming into our platform. So there's sort of a base case. And, you know, and I'd say that that goes across many different areas. Like I think every firm will have uh, AI use cases that could be applied in any different firm. Um, then if you look more specific to reg reporting, um, there's then, yeah, you know, there's a lot of repetitive tasks within the reg reporting chain, whether that is, you know, correcting or augmenting data, uh, whether that is the process of understanding, okay, you usually do this with the data. So sort of the machine learning part of AI uh, that is really applicable within reg reporting. And that's also some of what I was alluding to before about looking at, about, at the workflows that are in play and how you transform the workflows to make it more efficient. It sort of shocked me actually the, the amount of people that are in the reg reporting space versus platform, if you were to compare it to further up the bank and like trading and even into ops, it's a completely different pivot in the in the percentage of one to the other. Um, and so these and uh, machine learning sort of helps you with that. And then the third area is, is related to granular data. The, if you've got the granular data, you can look proactively for patterns in the granular data to then see for things that you know look suspicious. And so, you know, we had uh, one example where they were able to spot that actually the lending to um, uh, women was far less than the lending to men, you know, and it wasn't something necessarily that was in a template field, but they were able to see it when they looked at the patterns in the raw data itself. And then they were able to feed that into their policies and back into um, how they're managing, overrides, supervising the markets. Awesome. 
That's a, that's a great explanation. And um, I, uh, I thank you for your time today and the uh, informative discussion. I, I think that our listeners uh, will have learned a lot about this march towards granular reporting, uh, some of the, the, the driving factors there, and, and how Regnology is helping uh, everyone in sort of the regulatory reporting ecosystem uh, adapt and transform uh, in response. So uh, appreciate the, the time and explanation. Uh, if you'd like to learn more about Regnology, uh, you can head over to regnology.net. Um, you can learn more about them. You could also uh, access their free report on the future of regulatory reporting. So we encourage our listeners uh, to do that. Uh, and uh, if you'd like to listen to more episodes like this one about the forefront, you can go to forefrontcoms.com. That's comms with two M's uh, and head over to the news and insights page uh, for more episodes. Again, thanks, Linda, for joining us. Thank you to all our listeners. And until next time.